Bigfoot and Bot Nation allegedly threatened MTV last year about Nicki Minaj performing Red Ruby the Sleeves. Now this year's VMAs will be hosted by Guess Who? The person who can't even sell out arenas on a first tour. The person who just made the Democratic Party look like a joke by twerking on the vice president's stage. Now you've also become friends with Jay-Z and they both give you advice. Who gives you better advice, Beyonce or Jay-Z? Or do you feel comfortable telling? I would say Jay-Z gives the fun advice. <laughs> what, the fun like, advice? Nicki Minaj is furious right now because she believes Jay-Z and Beyonce used their influence to get Megan Thee Stallion to host this year's VMS instead of her. But that's not all. I know Nicki hasn't always played her cards right, and she could definitely work on handling industry drama better, but you should also keep in mind that Nicki is not the only one who's called out Jay-Z and Rock Nation for allegedly pulling shady moves back in 2016. Kanye West publicly accused Jay-Z and Beyonce of using blackmail to win Grammys, and he even hinted that Jay might send shooters after him. Recently, a deranged fan with alleged ties to Rock Nation filed an unusual $5 million lawsuit against Nicki. This has led fans to speculate that Jay-Z is on a mission to completely destroy Nicki's career. Call me, Chask, you haven't contacted me yet. Music crowd cheers me and after that, 50 Cent recently made a similar statement, stating that Beyonce stays standing in the business is mostly influenced by Jay's Grammy collection. Jay-Z's career, you can look at that and say the association to Beyonce is when he started to receive the 16 months, he got 16, 17 Grammys since he's been with Beyonce, right? And, and you go prior to that, one. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that came in association, like, like you see the, the kids even have Grammys, like, they don't, they don't sing yet. They don't sing. Right. They don't rap yet. <laughs> and they already have Grammys and shit. So it's like they give this, this, give them this trophy so, so we secure that they're coming. But this is only the tip of the iceberg because Nikki escalated the situation and called out specific members of Rock Nation, who she claimed were plotting to remove her, including the CEO herself, Daisy Ray Perez, and Daisy Ray, who just so happens to be a former federal informant. As for his affiliation with government intelligence, that is obviously no secret at all, so I think it's crazy that no one brings that up. Yes, of course they are affiliated with them, but this goes much deeper than Nikki and Megan's beef. Regardless of your feelings toward Nikki, you have to give her credit for her audacity in calling out these people whom everyone else seems to regard as untouchable. Did Jay-Z and Rock Nation really pull strings to get? Nikki removed from this year's VMAs? Or could this be part of a larger, more sinister scheme to destroy Nikki? Let's dissect this. Nikki is replaced with Megan, therefore, for those who may not be aware, both 2022 and 2023 saw Nikki Minaj host the VMAs. During her tenure, viewership increased dramatically, and all indications pointed to Nikki hosting the show for a third consecutive year this year, especially since it is taking place in her home Queens. However, at that point, it is said that Rock Nation intervened and forced MTV to replace Nikki with Megan Thee Stallion. You may recall from last year when Nikki informed the audience at the VMAs at the VMAs that some people were calling MTV prior to her performance. Quick, MTV is petrified because they got a couple calls yesterday and, and people were saying, what if Nikki says this and if Nikki says that? And they, and, and, and MT, and, and, and you know, and I said, it's okay, MTV, I can control myself. Because if you can't control yourself, you can't control anything around you, right? But you know who can't control themselves? Roman. Red Ruby the Sleeves. The unfolding drama in the music industry has taken a new turn, bringing to light some behind-the-scenes maneuvering that fans and insiders are buzzing about. The popular industry insider page, Keeping the Culture Alive, recently stirred the pot by revealing a major shakeup in the VMA lineup that had been kept under wraps until now. They hinted a week in advance that Megan Thee Stallion would replace Nicki Minaj as the headlining performer at the 2024 VMAs. On August 6, they posted a cryptic message that alluded to this very scenario, sending fans into a frenzy of speculation. According to Keeping the Culture Alive, this shakeup was orchestrated by none other than Dazari Perez, a key figure at Rock Nation. Perez, who has been involved in various high-profile situations in the music industry, allegedly pressured MTV to ensure that Nicki Minaj would not be the main attraction at this year's VMS, 
which are being hosted in Nikki's hometown of Queens. The insider claims that Perez made it clear that if Nikki performed her hit Red Ruby at the event, there would be significant consequences. The plot thickens when we remember that during last year's VMAs, Nikki mentioned in her opening monologue that certain phone calls were made regarding her hosting duties. This year, according to the insider, Desiree Perez demanded that Megan Thee Stallion be given the spotlight as both host and performer, effectively sidelining Nikki. This move is seen by many as a strategic play to keep Nikki from dominating the event in her own city, potentially overshadowing other performers, including Megan. But what makes this situation even more intriguing is the alleged leverage being used in this power play. The insider claims that Perez hinted at using Beyonce as a bargaining chip to ensure her demands were met. Given Beyonce's enormous influence and her close ties to Rock Nation, this threat would carry significant weight. The suggestion is that if MTV did not comply with Perez's demands to prioritize Megan, Beyonce might appear at the VMAs, a move that would undoubtedly disappoint fans and impact the event's success. For those who find this situation ironic, it's not surprising that Rock Nation is once again at the center of controversy. The label, known for its high-profile artists and influential executives, often finds itself entangled in industry drama. However, this time the controversy is particularly pointed, with accusations flying and no one pulling punches. Desiree Perez, the woman at the heart of this situation, has a complicated and, some might say, controversial past. She wields considerable industry power as president of Rock Nation, but her journey to this position has not been without scandal. Perez's history has been the subject of much speculation and debate, particularly in relation to her involvement in legal matters that some fans have not forgotten. The tension between Nicki Minaj and Rock Nation, particularly Desiree Perez, has been simmering for some time. It reached a boiling point when Megan Thee Stallion dropped her diss track Hiss, which set off a wave of reactions among fans. Nicki, known for her sharp wit and unwillingness to back down, didn't take this lightly. She publicly accused Perez of using her influence to manipulate streaming services, ensuring that Megan's track received heavy promotion while simultaneously trying to bury Nicki's own release, Bigfoot. Nicki's response was scathing. She took to social media, writing, spending so much money, but she's the broke independent artist. Desiree, you got to let it go, baby. The world knows she's ass and can't rap. Stop effing trying to make fetch happen. I just put out a song with no promo, no video, it's already number two. This statement not only highlighted Nikki's confidence in her own success, but also threw a direct jab at Perez's alleged behind-the-scenes machinations. So who exactly is Desiree Perez, and why does she hold such sway in the industry? Perez's story is indeed a wild one, marked by both her rise to power within Rock Nation and the controversies that have followed her. Known for her business acumen and strategic mind, Perez has been instrumental in shaping the careers of some of the biggest names in music. However, her involvement in legal issues, particularly her role as an informant, has cast a long shadow over her reputation. Perez's past has often been a point of contention among fans and industry insiders alike. Her ability to navigate the complex world of music, combined with her controversial history, makes her a figure who is both feared and respected. As this latest drama unfolds, it's clear that Perez is once again playing a pivotal role in the narrative, using her influence to shape the outcome of one of the year's most anticipated events. The ongoing tension between Nicki Minaj and Rock Nation, fueled by the actions of Desiree Perez, reflects the broader struggles for power and dominance in the music industry. As fans and insiders continue to watch the situation develop, one thing is certain this year's VMAs are set to be a battleground, with the outcome likely to have lasting implications for all involved. She holds such a grip on the industry Desiree started out in the music business back in the mid-90s working as an assistant manager at a nightclub in New York, that's when she began rubbing elbows with local artists eventually catching the eye of Jay-Z fast forward to 2008 when Jay-Z launched Rock Nation and by the next year. Desiree Perez's rise to prominence within Rock Nation is a story filled with success, influence, and controversy. From her start as the chief operating officer to her eventual promotion as CEO, Perez has played a crucial role in shaping the careers of some of the biggest names in the music industry, including Jay-Z and Beyonce. Her influence has extended to nearly every significant project they've undertaken. However, beneath the surface of her impressive resume lies a past, that many might find shocking, one that continues to cast a long shadow over her career. 
In 2019, Jay-Z made the announcement that Perez would be stepping into the role of CEO at Rock Nation. For many, this was a natural progression. Perez had proven herself to be a strategic mastermind, closely involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the company, and trusted by both Jay-Z and Beyonce. Her promotion seemed like the culmination of years of hard work and loyalty. But to truly understand the magnitude of this achievement, one has to rewind the clock to 1994, a year that marked a significant turning point in Perez's life. In 1994, Desiree Perez was arrested for possession of 35 kilos of cocaine and charged with conspiracy to distribute substance across state lines. The charges were severe, with federal authorities accusing her of being a key player in a drug trafficking operation that spanned from New York to Florida to Puerto Rico. According to court records obtained by the New York Daily News, Perez was deeply involved in this criminal enterprise, and the evidence against her was overwhelming. It was a moment that could have ended her ambitions, yet it would become a pivotal chapter in her story. Fast forward to June 11, 1996, when Perez appeared in court for a hearing that would determine her fate. The federal prosecutor, assistant U.S. attorney Lawrence Bartfeld, made a surprising argument. Rather than pushing for a harsh sentence, Bartfeld advocated for leniency. He informed the judge that Perez had been cooperating closely with federal agents, becoming their star mole in an investigation that brought down significant figures in the drug trade. This cooperation was crucial in reducing her sentence, keeping her out of jail, and setting her on a path that would eventually lead her to the world of music and entertainment. The decision to cooperate with the authorities was a controversial one, but it ultimately saved Perez from a lengthy prison sentence. However, it also meant that she would carry the label of an informant, a title that would follow her for the rest of her career. Despite the stigma attached to this role, Perez was determined to reinvent herself. She did so by aligning with one of the most powerful figures in the music industry J-Z. Perez's relationship with Jay-Z began to flourish as she proved herself indispensable in managing the intricate details of his and Beyonce's business ventures her ability to navigate complex negotiations, and her sharp business acumen made her an invaluable asset. Over time, she became one of Jay-Z's most trusted confidants, working on everything from album releases to major tours. Her influence within Rock Nation grew, and so did her power. But not everyone was comfortable with Perez's ascent. Dame Dash, Jay-Z's former business partner and co-founder of Rockefeller Records, has spoken openly about his unease regarding Perez's involvement with the company. In particular, Dash recalled how the situation with Perez marked the first time he truly felt fear about what Jay-Z was capable of. The idea that Jay-Z, a man known for his loyalty and street credibility, would align himself with someone who had cooperated with federal authorities was a stark reminder of the ruthless pragmatism that sometimes drives success in the entertainment industry. Dash's comments reflect a broader discomfort within certain circles about Perez's past and her role at Rock Nation. While her business achievements are undeniable, the fact that she once played a pivotal role in a federal investigation remains a point of contention. Some see her as a survivor, someone who made difficult choices to escape a dangerous life and used her second chance to build an empire. Others view her past as a betrayal, a stain that no amount of success can fully erase. Despite the controversy, Perez's position as CEO of Rock Nation has only solidified her power in the industry. She continues to oversee major deals, manage top-tier artists, and shape the future of music. Her journey from a troubled past to the pinnacle of the entertainment world is a testament to her resilience and determination. Yet it is also a reminder of the complex and often contradictory nature of the music industry, where loyalty, power, and morality frequently intersect in unpredictable ways. As Desiree Perez continues to navigate her role at Rossi Nation, her past remains a topic of interest and debate. While some may never fully reconcile her involvement in a drug conspiracy with her current position of influence, others see her story as one of redemption and transformation. Regardless of one's perspective, there's no denying that Perez has left an indelible mark on the industry, one that will be remembered for years to come. This is the one time that the paper did scare me, and I was like, it has to be some truth to it, is when I read about his affiliation with, you know, informing, yeah. you know, that he's in business with certain people. And it's tricky for me to say, but just based on where I'm from, I can't be, I can't have nothing to do with that. And then just based on... Do you believe that though? I, just, I don't know, it's paperwork. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's not not to believe, you know what I'm saying? It's, there's paperwork. So 
that part of it scares me because I know Biggs is in jail. I know Herb Gotti's been harassed for years over to do. I know they've been me for years. So it just means I need to stay over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I love Jay, but let's say I find out that any of that, I can't with him at all because that's how I was raised. It ain't no disrespect. I don't know how anyone else was raised. That's yeah. it. It ain't nothing to talk about. And it's real serious for me because, you, you know, your friend, my man's in jail for three years over weed. You know, the feds is really on me. It's not like they not. And where I'm from, that's tolerated at all. Fast forward to 2019, and a new chapter in Desiree Perez's story began to unfold, one that only deepened the intrigue surrounding her connections and influence. Photos emerged of Perez escorting Nicki Minaj's ex, Meek Mill, into court. This wasn't just a routine appearance Meek Mill managed to get multiple charges dropped, including those for substance and gun possession, as well as assault. The sight of Perez accompanying Meek Mill, with her controversial past and rumored connections, naturally led to a flurry of speculation. People began to wonder could Perez still have federal connections that she was leveraging to sway the outcome of high-stakes legal battles. This possibility sent shockwaves through the industry, stirring rumors and raising eyebrows. For those familiar with Perez's history, it seemed like more than just a coincidence. After all, she had once played a key role as a federal informant, helping authorities take down a major drug operation in exchange for a reduced sentence. She was now seemingly using her influence to aid Meek Mill, which only added to her mystique. It was a stark reminder that in the world of entertainment, power often extends far beyond the stage and the studio. Knowing everything we now know about Desiree Perez and her formidable connections, one has to give Nicki Minaj credit for her bravery. Nicki, never one to shy away from controversy, publicly called out Perez, accusing her of manipulating the industry in favor of other artists, particularly Megan Thee Stallion, Nikki's bold move was met with a mix of support and concern from her fans, who admired her courage but also feared the potential repercussions of going up against someone as powerful as Perez. Just when it seemed like the situation couldn't get any messier, Nikki found herself hit with a bizarre lawsuit. The timing of this legal action couldn't have been more suspicious it came on the very same day that news broke about Megan Thee Stallion replacing Nikki as the host of this year's VMAs. The lawsuit, seemingly out of nowhere, only fueled speculation that there were forces at play behind the scenes, working to undermine Nikki at a crucial moment in her career. The lawsuit's specifics were murky, but its timing was too coincidental to ignore. With the drama surrounding the VMAs already reaching fever pitch, adding a legal battle only added to the chaos. Fans and industry insiders alike began to question whether this was all part of a coordinated effort to sideline Nikki in favor of newer, more Rossi Nation-aligned talent. For Nikki, this sequence of events was a stark reminder of the challenges that come with being at the top of the industry. Despite her years of success and influence, she found herself facing not just competition but also potentially orchestrated attacks on her career. The combination of Desiree Perez's growing industry power, the sudden lawsuit, and Megan Thee Stallion's rise as the new face of the VMA suggested a shifting landscape in the music world one where even established stars like Nicki Minaj had to fight to maintain their position. As the dust settled, one thing became clear the music industry is as much about power and influence as it is about talent. And in this high-stakes game, alliances, connections, and timing can be just as important as the music itself. For Nicki Minaj, the battle was far from over, and with figures like Desiree Perez pulling the strings behind the scenes, the future remained uncertain and filled with intrigue. Nikki was slapped with a $5 million lawsuit filed by a fan named Tamir Peak. Tamir claimed Nikki humiliated him in front of her entire fan base and accused him of being one sandwich short of a picnic. He also alleges that Nikki's husband Kenneth physically attacked him at a Super Bowl party in 2020. And when he tried to talk to Nikki, regarding it, Nikki's legal team responded angrily, presenting receipts that proved Tamir had been following Nikki for years, despite Tamir's protestations that she didn't give a damn. On Nikki's Pink Friday 2 tour, Tamir allegedly attended 15 different shows and would wait outside the arena for hours until Nikki's car would leave. Nikki's team also disclosed that Tamir had posted some unsettling tweets, one of which advised Nikki to create an off account for her son. Tamir even called Nikki's son his nephew and mentioned arriving at her house for a playdate. Because if that's not stalker behavior, I don't know what is. Nikki's fans said that Rock Nation was following Tamir on Instagram but they allegedly unfollowed him once the criticism raised the alarm. People began to piece together the details and realized that perhaps 
Nikki wasn't lying when she said there was a planned conspiracy to bring her down, and with what we know about Rock Nation and Diary Perez, it really makes you wonder just how deep this rabbit hole goes. Someone commented that they weren't big fans of Nikki or Meg, but even Stevie Wonder can see that Nikki is Diddy and Jay-Z operate similarly. Hire a musician, then ruin their career. Let us know what you think, do you believe Nikki is being targeted, or are Jay-Z and Rock Nation truly planning to ruin her permanently? Please leave your comments below, and don't miss this next video. Nikki has natural talent that you can't buy. Her catalog speaks for itself.